Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, He scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with a Nittany Lion after a TD? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, We are Penn State! Welcome to the Steel Flyers Show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and boy, oh boy, we're going to be talking about the NHL playoffs, most specifically the East Division. That's right, we're talking about the Pittsburgh Penguins versus the New York Islanders and the Boston Bruins versus the Washington Capitals. We are flanked by the best in the business. That's right. Slapshot Sweethearts has decided to join us and grace us with their presence. Thank you, ladies, for hopping on and joining us. Shannon and Meg, how are you guys doing? Good. good. How are you? Yes. Oh, man, I'm doing good. I'm getting ready for some playoff hockey. <laughs> yeah, man, the second season. All right. And we are also joined by the great Perlo. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, man. Thank you very much for having me again. You got it, man. You got it. I thought this would be a great combination of folks to put together to talk about uh, some of the Eastern uh, Conference or the Eastern Division matchups here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, Boston Bruins. That would be Shannon's favorite team here. So uh, I'm sure she's going to have all the great gravy dirt on, on this series for sure. Uh, so how do you think about um, – Let's let's just start off with go around the room here. Um, Shannon, do you think Boston's going to win this game? And if so, how many games do you think it's going to be? Yeah, so I've been kind of teetering back and forth. I do think Boston's going to win. I think it's really hard to ignore uh, the momentum that they've had since they've acquired Taylor, Taylor Hall. I mean, they, they've been on an absolute tear. Taylor Hall looks like a completely different player. And even Curtis Lazar looks great, too. That was not expected. Um, and the Capitals look like all right right now, but not anything compared to what they did at the beginning of the season. So I think I've been kind of teetering back and forth between six and seven games. I don't think it's going to be a short series by any means. Like, I don't no. think it's going to be a sweep. Yeah. But I think, it, particularly when you look at the last game that they just had, when it was basically the Providence Bruins versus the entire starting lineup of the Capitals, <laughs> didn't look like anything special. So, I mean, it could have just been a one-game fluke, but, you know, I think – as long as the Bruins can keep the momentum going that they've had for the last few weeks, it should be a really great series for Boston. I'm going to have to agree with you on that. I really like Boston's chances in this. I'm actually, I have to say, I might actually be picking them to come out of the East. We'll, we'll see, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. But um, so Megan, what do you think about this Boston versus Washington here? Um, I, I know that um, some of these uh, matchups here are going to bode for things that are going to happen potentially later down the road. But what do you think about this Boston Washington matchup, Megan? Yeah, that has been my driving force in any picks I've made for this matchup here is that I would rather face the Caps coming out of this just because of their historic trouble with the Penguins. Yeah. So like Shins, the Bruins are on a roll. Like I don't want to be against them in the second round because I feel like <laughs> my chances as a Penguins fan would be worse, though they probably are the stronger team right now. Yeah. I'm manifesting a Capitals win. And I have that <laughs> I have to go into seven. Like I have yeah. enough respect for both teams that yeah. I think it will be a long series, but I would much rather manifest a Capitals win there. Yeah, I can I, I can definitely understand why why you would want to do that. And historically, Washington has not been the best uh playoff performer aside from the year they won the cup. You know what I mean? And 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 based off of what um Shan said as well too that Washington kind of looks like a shell of their former self. Now they had Ovechkin out for a while and they had everybody out there for a while, but you know, we'll see. All right, Perla, what do you think, man? Boston and Washington, man, what do you think? How many games? What do you think? Uh, first of all, I, well, I would have probably said just about everything Shannon did. Uh, the uh, the mo like, if you go on momentum alone, just that alone, Boston's got it all day. Uh, Washington's had a little more, a little disarray in the room there. Kuznetsov gets uh, sort of suspended on the COVID protocol. Obviously, there's been several times this year where that sort of thing has happened. Yeah, um, with him. With him, and yeah, he was definitely part of it. Um, 
Also, for me to add to what, uh, and as far as I would, uh, with Megan saying that she's manifesting the Washington Capitals, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if I was a Penguins fan, I'd be doing whatever kind of thing I could do to have that happen <laughs> as well. So for that reason also, yeah. that she's really saying that she doesn't actually think so, but she's really, really going to do all the get right. all she, her she's doing, in the, line. she's doing the Washington <laughs> Capitals dance, right? You yeah, know. exactly. <laughs> Wearing my house in Jersey to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Going into it, I think it's a little difficult to take anybody but Boston here. Um, goaltending for Washington's been a problem almost all year. They've been kind of winning despite their goaltending, not because yeah. of a lot of the time. Vanacek's just a kid. Sam Sonoff, they haven't, like, he, he's like, He's okay, but he's not okay. Like, you don't know, is he injured, not injured? They 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 keep on playing Vanacek, and they're sort of mum as to why. Like, he's yeah. not really injured. Like, what's going on? He's so, COVID. So he got COVID in the beginning of the season, and then yeah. he, hasn't been, he hasn't been healthy since then, which is not uncommon when you look yeah. at athletes, not even in the NHL, but throughout professional sports right now. I mean, I know the Celtics season's basically tanked because Jason Tatum got COVID and then was never the same again. So it's the same with Samsonov also. Yeah, good point. So that, yeah, right. that probably has a lot to do with it. If you look at the Vancouver Canucks, what happened? I mean, they have nothing after COVID. Like, the, the yeah. whole team got it. So that's probably it. It's just uh, gaining right. strength after that. So right. if they got to go with Vanacek against Rask, there's not that's too many be, players. Yeah. If you have NHL players in front of you and you have Rask against Vanacek and NHL players, I'm probably going to lean Rask. Uh, Rask is just a fantastic goaltender who has had injury problems. If you're manifesting, we don't want anybody to get injured. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. <laughs> but if somehow, you know, Rask can kind of get uh, removed from the area somehow. Yeah. His, <laughs> but if then his back got, suddenly starts acting up. But then you have Swayman in the back, you know, who Ooh. that kid was just unbelievable. Going, <sighs> like, he looks... Fantastic. I, I've been hearing a lot of stuff out of the college people about this guy, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, they're Boston fans, right? Okay, you like your goaltender, whatever. Yeah, no, but this kid's a real uh, deal. This guy's a real deal. So, yeah, um, then you have him to back him up. So, uh, yeah, I would have to – I'm, I'm going to have to go Boston. And I'm actually a little more um, – I'm not. Uh, I'm not on the side of a lot of people that are saying seven games here. I actually think it's only going to be five. I think Boston's really going to take this uh, because I. I think Boston's going to take them early, and then I don't. At this point, I. Ha I don't see the team unity in Washington right now. The only thing, the X factor to me, is that we're talking about Laviolette, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he is one of the greatest motivators that ever played the game. So. It's possible they could have them ready and going, and you never know, right? Yeah, And exactly. Washington had, well, they both have won a cup before. So there's, right. there's, but I mean, if you're resting your pick on whether Laviolette can rally these guys and go, probably going to stick with Boston until I see differently like now. Yeah, I'm with you on that. You know, I, I like what um, Shannon said. She brought up the fact that Hall has not been the same player since he's come over to Boston. He's exploded uh, mm. as well. And Lazar played as well. And even Riley that came mm. over yeah. in that whole deal, too. Uh, mm -hmm. And Boston played really well. Here's the thing that, that I think everybody has brought up so far is this. Yes, um, <laughs> Meg, we would like to manifest a Washington win for you. Girl can dream. Um, right. Um, trust me. I have, there are risks. I have concerns. Like, let's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? But when, when you look at how well Boston has played at the end of the season, they're carrying the better momentum, okay, where Washington has not played and fared as well towards the end of the season. They've missed a lot of guys. And, and I have to be with Perlo on this, too. If I'm, if I'm looking at Rask and Swayman against Vanacek and Samsonov, I, I got to lean. I got to lean because even the coach came out and said, we're going with Swayman instead of Halak. Uh -huh. Like right at the end of the season came right out and said that. So uh -huh. if, if I, if I had to choose, that's what it would come down to, to me because the X factor for me in Washington is Ovechkin. Okay. Uh -huh. And if, 
And if if he can come back alive and Samsonov can play well, then I do agree with you, Pearl. This is going to be a longer series. But, but that's a major if, if whether or not right. he's in full force. Yeah. He didn't make it through his first game. He barely made it through his first shift. He's played maybe two after that. And mm-hmm. he, like, he was fine on, what day was that? Tuesday? But he wasn't a star. He didn't score a goal. He was nope. not the Ovechkin you expect. And he only I think had three shots he was on goal even. Who at some point had COVID. He had antibodies, which was published. So whatever. But maybe he's just not his force right now, which could really work against them. So I don't know if he could be a positive. He very much may be a liability. And there you have it. Because I think that's a great point. You know, I didn't even think about that. That he that I and I, I did read about that that he had the antibodies or whatever. Um, but you know, and 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 when you mentioned um, Perlo that you know what happened with Vancouver, they got that Brazilian strain and that just wiped out their whole team and then all of their family. You know, so yeah. um, COVID definitely had an effect on the season this year, especially. Um, when it came to the Capitals and Boston, each team was affected a little bit differently. Um, Boston had a bout of it, but it seems like Boston was able to come out of it and was able to write the, put everything back on the right track and get everybody back and healthy and everything like that. Where, whereas Washington doesn't seem like they've been able to do that this year. Mm-hmm. And and now coming into the playoffs, I think I, I'm with you, Perlo, man. I, I think this is going to be a short series. I think Boston's just going to take it to them. I think they're going to come out and win those first two games in Boston, and maybe split the other two, and then win. Maybe it. split the other two. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Ooh. I think there are still maybe I'm just being negative because I, I don't necessarily trust them 100% but there a lot of that Bruins roster does not have playoff experience True. and I think that's a huge factor and then on the other side of the ice is Zdeno Chara who carries this team through the yeah. playoffs the last however many years mm-hmm. and it's that's a mind game that maybe I just put too much pressure on the mental side of the playoffs but I think that if they let that get to their heads, that is going to be a huge issue when you compare playoff Chara to regular season Chara. You know, and that's something else that I didn't even think about, Chan, is that Chara is now going to be facing Boston for this series. I hate it. So, <laughs> okay. One of the biggest... That's also a thing when Chan is talking it. about age here. Like, the Bruins do have a lot of people who haven't been in playoff hockey. The Caps are so old. And yeah. so many of them if not with the Caps, but with the Pens and with other teams, have won Cups, and they know what this is like. So they have that advantage of the being Bruins, experienced really getting through this. Wow. Mm-hmm. They okay, have yeah. sheer- Right? I think they have yep. Aglin, too, maybe. I don't Soros. even remember who they've taken. Yeah. Soros, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there, 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 there certainly is that. Um, I don't know. When you have Bergerons and Marchands, I think those kind of getting in your head type stuff, like those guys are two of the greatest leaders in sports. Uh, fantastic. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. But I, uh, you bring up a really good point, Shannon. They... They did go with a much younger roster, and one of the reasons why is Chara went to Washington. He's won those <laughs> cups, you know, and so it is going to be. There's a lot of young guys that, that like Lao Zone. I've really loved the way he played all year, but we have. What is he going to be like in the playoffs? Uh, um, um, even Greslick. This is the first time he's played in the playoffs, but this is the first time he's really the guy here yeah. now in Boston. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that, that is a really good point. And that definitely has a factor in any, uh, we've seen it over and over again. Teams take a while to build into becoming championship teams. The good thing about it is there's just an aura about the Boston Bruins. Like, look at this year. Like, they look like they were going to miss the playoffs possibly this year. And they make a couple moves or whatever, and then boom, it's back to being Boston again. They but did all you know, find a way as an organization. Did they look like they were going to lose because of themselves or because of yes. the Rangers looked good? Both. I would say both. There was a middle stint of the season that they really did not look good, and I they did the trade deadline perfectly. They made the moves they needed to make, and they showed that, no, we are not that far off from being the team we need to be as much as you know Twitter can tell you otherwise. <laughs> and, and well, 
<laughs> you, you make the moves you need to make and you get to the caliber you need to get to and then you can compete and I think they have like we've said the perfect matchup that they need to in the first round the only one I really wasn't comfortable with surprisingly was the Islanders I really didn't want to play the Islanders because they do not play well against the Islanders but I think this is a great matchup and I think that they're set To, like we've said, make a really good run in the first round. Yeah. No, I agree with that all the way. I agree with that all the way. And and then with the moves that Boston did make, I mean, they were pretty up they were pretty much perpetually in fourth place almost the whole season. And then not long after they made the trade deadline, oh, now they're in third. You know what I mean? So they they were in fourth place there for gosh, most of the season and then now they're they finish in in the, you know, in a higher position than fourth. So <laughs> uh, I, I think what they've done is has has been really good as far as the additions that they've made with the trade deadline. I believe that's gonna take them over the hump. With what you said, Perlo, I think they're building that team, they're building that momentum. They do have that aura about them. You know what I mean? They're coming into the playoffs relatively hot, playing good hockey. Whereas Washington just doesn't seem like they are. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. I, I think with the exception of of Meg giving us her um, <laughs> her her dream, her dream sequence <laughs> yeah. of Washington. You know, look, I think if this series goes long, then Washington has a better shot. Yeah. Okay, but if it's going to be a short series, then I'm going to call it Pitts or Boston. But I think if it goes longer, I think the longer it goes, the more chance Washington has. You know what I mean? Because who knows? They, they those first two games, they might have to say, "Oh, okay, now we're awake." Now. Well, it's the I was saying it on our lunchtime live stream today. The Bruins in the Capital split the series this season, but two of the yeah. losses were in overtime. So the Bruins are, get it to that point, but then they're not able to hold on to it. So if they, it's one of those, they keep giving away those late games to the Capitals, they're screwed. They're not going to be able to keep keep hold of it. See, that's kind of what my fear is there as well. You know what I mean? If they can hold on to the lead and keep it, then then they're good. But if not, then it's it's going to be some of those overtime games. And I think we're going to see one or two of them in this series. Love that. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah I, I pretty much think we're going to see at least one. In this series, an overtime game. This is the first time that, in a long time, I can say that I think Boston has better forward depth than Washington does. When they're getting Hall, um, you're, you've got like guys like DeBrusk playing third, fourth line. Uh, Washington's forward depth, especially if Kuznetsov can't play, is not spectacular, really, when you look right. at it. Right. Um, so, and as far as defense. You might be able to give the edge to Washington, as Shannon said, because they have a little more experience playing in the playoffs. But goaltending, I've given to Boston all day. Yeah. And uh, but I, but I really think it's impressive that they were able to turn that around and have uh, pretty good, really good uh, offensive depth in the and where we didn't see that coming. So exactly. I, I think they're doing. I think they did a really good job. It's just Boston is as an organization just finds a way. Finds a way. There you go. Well, here's something that I don't think any one of us, well, on at least on the Steel Flyers side, probably on the Slapshot Sweetheart sides, because, well, Megan, you're a Pittsburgh fan. But what we're going to talk about the next uh, uh, series here is the Pittsburgh Penguins versus uh, the New York Islanders. And I have to say, I did not expect Pittsburgh to even be remotely sniffing the playoffs this year. When I looked at their roster and saw their defense and then saw their goaltending, I was like, eee! I had them as fourth preseason. I had them as fifth, but the Flyers took the – they were supposed yeah. to be in the playoffs, and then everything went haywire. <laughs> okay, so – all right. So now you're on the same path that I was on, right? I thought the Flyers were going to be there, yep. Pittsburgh not. But, but well, we all know how that worked out. All right. <laughs> so, Meg, here you go. This is no longer dream sequence. Right. This is live, right? What do you yeah. think? Break I, it down for me. Zero percent of me accepted the expected at all the Penguins to go into this as the number one seed in the East. Like I'm shocked. Right. But when you look at it, like lately, 
we have such force. Kasperi Kapanen, and Jeff Carter has been a great acquisition. Crosby's still doing good. Like even Brian Rust has been great for us lately. Like we have all these forces, but they're too far on the front. We have this like such weakness when you get past our forwards that like our defense is essentially barren. Our goaltending is shabby at best. <laughs> but Don't sugarcoat it for us now. Tell us how you really feel. We have such like goal scoring force, which is the only reason we're here. But let me tell you these concerns outside of what I already said. When we faced Barry Trotz's first season with the Islanders in the first round, we were swept in 2019. And then last year, we shit the bed. Shouldn't have even been there. So coming <laughs> back here and trying to be in true Penguins form is difficult based on the last two years. But, yeah. I mean, in the regular season, we beat the Islanders 6-2. to two. Granted, two of them were OT wins. Still count. But I'm less reliant right now on the Penguins' strengths and more reliant on some issues that the Islanders may have. Okay. Their captain um, yeah. got hurt late, early this week. He's done for the season. I think we're still uncertain exactly what their goaltending situation is going to be. I know Varlamov has had some issues. I'm not saying Jari and Smith both being out and playing our AHL goalie was great for us last week, even though we won. But goaltending is a real question here. And, like, as much as I'm going to say the Penguins are going to take it in five, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. Because when 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 you look at the team from the beginning of the year compared to where they are now, mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? It's it's okay. it's a complete different – it's a complete turnaround. And you know what I mean? But I can't even mention Gino here as a strength because he never got going this season. Right. Malkin has just been subpar at best, not in his element, and it's almost like we did better before he came back. Oh, he missed, what, six or seven weeks? Yeah, a long time. All he did in those six or seven weeks was made YouTube videos with Crosby shooting puffs at Zambonis. Like, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's how you spend your seven weeks on IR, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean. <laughs> he makes videos for the communications team. Well, there you go. All right. All right, Shannon. Uh, what do you think here? Uh, who do you like? Megan and I have done a couple preview shows, and she has failed to mention all of those lovely statistics about the Penguins' poor play against Barry Trotz. So I was going to say Penguins <laughs> in five, but I think I have to tack on one more game and say Penguins in six, probably. Okay. Uh, just because Barry Trotz is an incredible coach. You can't deny that. And although the Islanders do have – injury issues both with Varlamov and then other players on their roster. My concern is not there. My concern is their decline since they've traded for Palmieri. He was not a good fit for their roster. I mean, there's a certain, you can bolster as much. The, the Kansas City Chiefs do it all the time. The Buccaneers do it too. In the NFL, it's a really, in the NBA, it's a bad issue where you get, you just try to acquire literally anybody you want, yeah. whether they're a fit or not. And it's not common in the NHL, but when it happens, it really shows. And the Islanders really showed that just acquiring the best person available does not mean that it's going to make you better. Yeah. And there was a huge risk of that when the Bruins did it with Taylor Hall, but it happened to work. It did not work with Paul Mary and the yeah. Islanders because he was not a good fit. They didn't need him. And they gave up a critical player on their roster. And now they're looking worse than they were prior. They don't have the momentum going into the playoffs. The off offensive side of the penguins obviously does even though the right. as soon as you pass center ice for the penguins it's a you know close your eyes and pray type situation it's, so, it's such a shame too because like dumoulin was has been with us for so long Latang has been there for so long like matheson and marino should be better like i said this before we came on i would never want to compliment cody cc but why is he the only person <laughs> like i just i just uh okay. why be one of the better defenders right now. He's not even a defender. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Perlo. Lay me some wisdom here, buddy. What do you think about this series? I don't know how much I can lay you here. I'm, I'm with the girls on this one. I'm really all like, I, I'm not a fan of either one of the teams in a sense. I mean, they're <laughs> just teams to me. So, um, you have the Islanders who do this, who've done this before. They go into the playoffs and they look like 
not like what like okay it's yeah they they should be okay or they might be okay but they're not great going in and then all of a sudden boom they're great again uh Barry Trotz actually said he was using the last 10 games of the season like a preseason so like a prepping he was prepping the players like he was using it the games as a practice almost so he wasn't even really concerned about winning so much he was just training new players to play the way he wants to play in the playoffs. Which is That's, really interesting because the Capitals did the exact opposite and wouldn't bench anyone, but they both declined in the same way. So, like, take that with what you want. Instead, they put their full <laughs> roster against the Providence Bruins. Yeah, so, exactly. That scares me. Uh, and because Barry Trotz, I think, that, like, like uh, Megan said, being a Pittsburgh fan, I would be scared because the Islanders will, can come out and play that system perfect and beat up just about anybody. We've seen it over and over again, right? Um, but going into it now, I mean, looking at it now, I say Pittsburgh's got the momentum. Pittsburgh's got all kinds of stuff. You like it, they've, And there's the other side of it. Pittsburgh's been voodoo all year. All of us didn't even pick them, like yeah. maybe just to barely make the playoffs or, or not, not make the playoffs yeah. at all. So why would they not be talking about uh, manifestation? Why would they not be more <laughs> just as voodoo in the playoffs? You know, yeah. like the the Crosby to me, I, I kind of disagree. I think he's had a fantastic year, considering he is the leader and he's really put all this together a lot. You hear people talk about him; they just say he's amazing on how he motivates players and gets them going, and all of those sort of things like that. And let's not undervalue Sullivan here. He is a unbelievable coach like these are two unbelievable coach going up against each other i see seven games i see seven games i i i it's not just see seven games i can't think of it any i'm so on the fence about these two because i i'm really excited to see what happens with this voodoo team and this islanders team who always seems to be able to come up in the playoffs and do something. Right. I think it's going to be fantastic. But honestly, I think it could go anyway. The Islanders could come out and play like we know and destroy Pittsburgh. That's true. That's true. That Megan has said. And then Pittsburgh could come out and Crosby could be on fire and Sullivan could have a system against the Islanders that counters that. Um, I still think Jari's way better than he showed this year. I think he's, he's just having an adjustment. Cool. With Murray leaving, and he's all of a sudden the guy, guy still yeah. a really young guy. So, ah, I'm gonna say Pittsburgh in seven. Oh, all right. Did that uh, hurt coming off the tongue? Uh, <laughs> uh, music to my ears. <laughs> I think that eight. hurt a little bit coming out for a little. But <laughs> let me say this: I'm in not March, sure. in March, Jari and the Smith were the best goalie tandem in the league. Liar. Ugh. No, I'm not a liar. No, I'm not. That's some bad goaltending in the league, let me tell you. <laughs> right. No, I'm just you kidding. Wouldn't, you wouldn't say Murray and Lenner? Oh, not Murray. Fleury and Lenner? No, they were in March. Oh, because was Lenner out then? Right. In March. Sorry, yeah, Lena was out. In the month of March, um, uh, Jari and DeSmith were the best goaltender tandem in the league. For the month of March, they won the most games and had the lowest um, goals against and the best percentage for the month of March. Wow. Here's another sick one for you, okay? The Crosby Gensel line, each one of them guys all has 20 plus goals. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And it's, we have so many games that they didn't have a single repeat goal and they were high goal games because everyone was scoring, yeah. everyone was contributing. Then, then you say, well, Gosh, we were missing Malkin for a little while. Let's trade for Jeff Carter. Okay. So he suddenly becomes your second line center and explodes right. with how many goals now and, and how many games. And then Malkin comes back. Now he's your third line center and he plays on the power play. What? I mean, uh, it just seems like the voodoo that Pittsburgh does just seems to continue to work every year as long as Crosby's on the team. I guess it doesn't really matter about who else is on the team. You, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I have to say this as well, too. This is going to be painful for me, too, but I'm going to say Pittsburgh in six. Oh. 
Wow, okay. and you were taking the Islanders to... I I thought the Islanders were going to win the division. I picked the Islanders to win the division. But yeah. how they've fallen off, how things have gone for them. Yeah, I agree, Trot's the best coach in the league. But, you know, you, you got to have that momentum coming into the playoffs. You just do. Okay? And it just doesn't seem like... Uh, that's a normal Barry Trotz team coming into the playoffs. Okay. If he's using the last 10 games as a preseason, maybe that's just, you know, maybe that's just this little yeah. lip service. I kind of thought yeah. that maybe too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe that's a little lip service to kind of throw everybody off. But quite frankly, when Anders Lee went down, that massively hurt this team, the mm -hmm. Islanders. And uh, both of them, both the ladies pointed out as well, uh, Shannon, uh, mostly, but pointed out that the trade that they made at the at the trade deadline didn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 those players that they added have not contributed very much to the team at all either. And that's what they were they when when you suddenly remove your captain, Anders Lee, and you, you you know you try to bring two guys in to fill that same one hole, and neither one of them do. You're still missing that player. Plus, they traded away another player too. So now they're down two guys. You know, and they're without their captain. You know what I mean? So that's to me why I'm 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 going with Pittsburgh on this one. So Oh yeah. All right. Well there you go. So now we we all have we're all in a, with the exception of the manifestation of Megan, we're all mm -hmm. in agreement that Boston's gonna win the first round. In in any number of combination of games five, six, or seven. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I think we're all in agreement. That Pittsburgh is going to win the next round. Am I correct in that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess I, I said it. So. Right. Yeah. You said it, and I said it, and I know Megan said it. Can't take yeah. it back. I can't yeah. take it back. No, nope, Shannon, you said it, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. There you go. Well, there. How about that? We actually all agreed on the Pittsburgh Penguins winning the first series. They're going to freaking lose now. I'm positive. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the reverse jinx. <laughs> I think that's why we're like, how many times? I mean, you look at this roster still, and you're just like, how are they doing it? I know. And you know, if, if Crosby wasn't on that team, everybody would be saying Sullivan is Trotz like is a great great coach like Trotz. It's only because Crosby's on that team it takes the shine off of what Sullivan does for that for that team. Really. I mean, that is a patchwork lineup. I don't care what you say, no matter how much I look at it, you can't tell me that that lineup is a playoff lineup. It's just not. And here they are winning the East. So how do you not take them to win in the playoffs when they've pretty much gone over the top of what exactly. I think anyways? I don't think they were a playoff lineup. In the beginning of the year, Matheson and CeCe were not yeah. high on anybody's nope. list of team, you know. So exactly. I think they've done an absolute fantastic Sullivan's done a fantastic job there with those penguins, that's for sure. Well, there you have it, folks. I think we got the first round here in the East all sewn up. And we have to have special thank you to the Slapshot Sweethearts for joining us, especially Shannon and especially Meg. Shannon, how, do you, how about if you tell all the folks how we can get a hold of you and where we can follow you and where we can get all your great stuff? Yeah, you can find me at swalshy 63 on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find... Slapshot Sweethearts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, literally anywhere. Uh, just search Slapshot Sweethearts. We're doing an NHL bracket challenge for uh, the playoffs. So if you go into the NHL bracket challenge and just search Slapshot Sweethearts, we have a league. We will be doing a big giveaway to the person who has Sweet. the closest bracket. Sweet. Um, probably won't be me. So <laughs> you will <laughs> winning. Mm -hmm. Uh, so please check that out and be sure to give us a like, follow, subscribe anywhere that you get your podcasts and your episodes. Sweet. Thank you very much. Megan, thank you very much for hopping on here. How can we get a hold of you and where can we get all your great stuff? Yeah, I'm Miss Meg Rach on every single social media I own except for Spotify, which I have some great playlists at Meg Rach 18. But yeah, no, my socials, Miss Meg Rach. Honestly, I'm not on my Twitter very much, but Slapshot Sweethearts Twitter is the place to be. <laughs> S Sweethearts Pod. If you're not following, that's a mistake. <laughs> 
Uh, yep, for sure. Definitely back that for sure. Listen, if you guys aren't following these two, you should be. If you're not watching Slap, Sarge, Slap Shot Sweethearts, you're missing out big time and you should be. So please like and subscribe to these um, folks because they know what's going on. That's why we brought them onto the show because these ladies are the bomb diggity. How about that, Perlo? How can we get a hold of you? Where can we get all your great stuff, man? I do a live stream as well. Uh, I check out uh, Slapshot Sweethearts in the mornings. Sometimes they they're 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 fun. You really got to check them out. I love the way they're just flat out blunt say like it is. Love it. <laughs> That's what I like. Uh, yeah, I I absolutely love it. Uh, I get in trouble for it. So and I don't. Me stop, too. So. <laughs> it's 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 better coming from a woman though. We uh, don't rarely say that. that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I do a show three to five, five days yeah, a week. Uh, at Perlo's NHL Perlo. Uh, how, how does that? At Perlo's NHL Perlo Wisdom Show? No, that's NHL not it. NHL Perlo Wisdom Show on there the Steel go. Flag Sports Network. There, there you go. That's, yeah. that's why he's the Don. He knows all this information. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, you can check me out at uh, Perlo's NHL POW on Twitter. And, of course, the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www. So you can find all my stuff, everything I do, all my videos, there and uh, check it out for everything there is some fantastic people over there uh that you can get like flyers nitty-gritty uh uh projo the oh yeah the, the profess- on the radio off, the, on the, wall rail, hockey. off yeah, yeah. the wall hockey i mean Sweet. just go over there you can spend the day there just take a day Pretty off much. work and check yeah, it yeah, out yeah. that's yeah. fun stuff so yeah that's where you can find me i'm going to be going off to do that show right away so we better yep. get going Mm -hmm. You got it. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, This is Steel Flyers from the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. You can catch me on Twitter at SteelFlyers52, and you can also check me out on the web at www.steelflyers.com. Thank you all very much for joining. This was the East Division Playoff Prediction Show with the Slapshot Sweethearts, Steel Flyers, and Pearl Wisdom. Thank you all for watching. Check us out on the next show. Just remember, folks, stay strong, stay safe, and hang tough.